Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Yeah, I'm in the electric room again because I have a couple of questions that came through on the comment section. I want to address those right away and get those done. <clears throat> okay, from Paul. Uh, he has um, hydro and... Uh, solar on his farm and he wants to combine them well you can do that but it takes separate controllers and see this is uh, one of the hybrid controllers that says wind slash solar it doesn't say wind and solar the wind slash solar hybrid controller means you can use it for either wind or solar. Now his hydro is basically wind because they use uh, pretty much the same type of generator as just different power. One is powered by water, one is powered by air or wind. Okay, now you can combine those to charge the same battery bank but you have to use separate controllers. So there's no need buying a hybrid controller. That's a kind of a waste of money because it, it's not going to run both at the same time. It runs one or the other. There's only one display here, and that's it. And then you got your enter, your escape, up and down for your settings. You don't, you can't change between readouts of uh, solar and readouts of wind or hydro. Okay. Now this is the box this thing came in. And I bought this back when I first started here, 2016. Okay, this was one of my first, um, oops, dang it's, um, learn about wind and solar. I bought this thing, and about the only good thing that ever came out of it was I get to use this uh, resistor for my dump load on my wind turbine. So, let's get back to Paul's uh, dilemma. Okay, so if you have a hydro that uses um, AC or provides AC like a, a wind turbine or a PMA, which is a permanent magnet alternator, if it's using an alternator, and it has three wires coming in, then you have to go through a bridge rectifier. These are the three input on the top, and then it converts it to DC with uh, one positive, one negative coming out. Okay, and I don't, don't worry about that burn there. That was from a, an, another episode. Uh, the wire still works, so I didn't change it yet. Anyway, um, yeah, you could do this, and then you can take the positive and the negative and you can go into the solar part of a controller. But if you have the three wires coming in uh, from your, either your hydro or your wind, then you can go right into the three wires here in the center. Now these two outer ones are for dump load, okay, so, or resistor. And what that does is, if your um, input just exceeds what you really need, it sends the extra power out to the resistor and burns it up with heat. And everybody says, well, why don't I use that for a water heater? I do not need a water heater out here um, more than the propane water heater I have, the instant water heater inside the cabin. That's plenty of hot water for me. Summer's coming. I shut that thing off. I don't use it because the water's too hot. Okay, and we'll be getting into water in another segment of this uh, things you need off-grid. But for right now, let's stay with the electricity. Okay, so now this Midnight Classic, the 150, the 200, and the uh, 250. Not the SL. The SL's for solar only. But um, the, the standard units can be used either for solar 
or uh, wind or hydro. Okay. Now even this one will not use a, both solar and uh, wind or hydro together. It's one or the other. If you want to use the, those two inputs, you got to have two controllers. That's all there is to it. Now the controllers, you can have more than one controller going to your batteries. There's no problem with that. Because the controller takes the input power, levels it out, and controls it to the proper output for your batteries. So if one um, setup is putting more electricity than is needed in, the other one will respond to it and shut down also. And you see it says 13.8, it says 13.8. So they kind of balance each other out. Now with the Midnights, you can actually hook those up in series and have one control um, the others down the line. So that's a nice thing about these. They are expensive, but boy do you get your money's worth when you buy one of those. All right, so last but not least on today, um, I think I've covered what you needed to know, Paul. Uh, just get yourself two controllers. If you're going to use these, I'm going to warn you up front. I have not found a single Chinese-made product yet that actually performs and meets what it says it does. This one says that it runs 600 watts either solar power or 600 watts wind power or water power, whichever one you, you have going into it. But it'll handle 600 watts only. It's not a 1200 watt system. It's a 600 watt system. It'll only handle one input and one output. Okay? So, forget this. Get yourself, matter of fact, get yourself a Renogy Rover. They're a fraction of the cost of the Midnight Classic. But that'll do what you want it to do. Um, you can power your solar off of one Renogy Rover, and then your um, hydro, if it's a two-wire hydro, which is a generator, then you just have the two wires going into where the solar input would go. And it should take whatever power is going in there. Just remember, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again because I want to drive it into everybody's head. When it comes to controllers, I don't care what brand of controller you're going to use. I don't care if you buy the cheapest piece of uh, junk you can find on the market. All controllers, all controllers, you have to hook up the battery first. And when you're disconnecting the system, you have to disconnect the battery last. Okay, just remember that. And why? Well, most of these are designed, they have um, variable inputs, 12 or 24 volts. Uh, some of them go 12, 24, 36, 48, so forth and so on. You have to hook the battery bank up first to it to tell the controller what voltage you're going to be charging with your input. The input doesn't matter. You can see I'm putting in 107.8, 107.7 volts. It's coming in on that set of solar panels. All right. So that's, uh, that's being controlled in the controller to charge 12 volt battery system because I hooked up my batteries first and told the controller what I wanted. Now on this rover, I have to push buttons to get that information. I have 72.9 volts coming in off the solar. Okay, that's another string of solar. So that does that doesn't match the 107.7 this is 72.7 the input is being controlled by the controller and the output right on this one is uh, the shown on the batteries are at 13.8 the output is going to be about 12.7 or something like that um, just higher than the 12.6 that we need 
So down the, down here, this one's showing I got th only three amps, and be, because it doesn't need it, 100% on the batteries, 13.8 um, on the batteries. I'm um, going out to this fan. I've got a half an amp, and I've got 143 amp hours input so far for today, and I got nine amp hours going out to my auxiliary. Okay, uh, it's 27 degrees Celsius is the uh, battery temperature. And then 15 means um, I have it set for running auxiliary. And then e me O means no, no errors, errors are zero, zero. And then back to the main screen. I see I'm on float. I don't need any more power going in. So this system automatically floats and keeps the power correct. All right, so that's about it. Now into the, today's description, I will put links to uh, buying PV wire, po photovoltaic wire. Um, and if you would please, if you need to buy some, buy it from the links that I send uh, because I get credit for those. And that's what helps me make more videos, helps me live out here. All right, so I will have that for, um, uh, let's see, we'll do eight, 10, and 12 size wi uh, photovoltaic wires. So that should cover you for whatever you need to make extension wires to come from your panels outside into your controllers inside. That's it. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget your thumbs ups. Don't forget to share and subscribe. This is G-Bear signing off.